Welcome to Grover Load, and here we have some more details coming out from the 13th and 14th gen chips with stability issues. And uh, I was reading an article uh, a few different places, but Iger Labs and Video Cards had some stuff on there talking about the root cause about a microcode algorithm associated with the ETVB feature in these Intel processors that were causing the uh, stability issues or reliability issues. Now, since then, you know, this has kind of gone in uh, a little bit more detail here of what, um, you know, Iger kind of had and put out there, but then Intel had somebody respond, and <laughs> I will read this. Um, this is contrary to recent reports, Intel has not conformed the root cause and is continuing with its partners to investigate user reports regarding instability issues on unlocked Intel Core 13th and 14th Gen K, KF, and KS desktop processors. The microcode patch referenced in press reports fixes an ETVB bug discovered by Intel while investigating the instability reports. While this issue is potentially contributing to instability, it is not the root cause. So, you could still have, you know, degraded silicon, whatever else has been happening to these chips. You know, we don't know what Intel is all going through here, but Intel did state that we'd have information by the end of May. Then May has, and they'd have an official statement on it. There was not really a, you know, huge official statement on this by any means from Intel, uh, as far as I'm concerned. And uh, may, maybe you're okay with their little talks here and there, but they said we're going to have a, a, you know, report on this, you know, official statement. And it seems like more, they put more pressure on their motherboard um, manufacturers and kind of brush the blame off on them rather than them taking for any responsibility. Here we have now an update and with this microcode that is coming out. And it seems like Intel may be further from um, understanding what's actually wrong with these than getting closer to it. Now, um, I think that's just on the outside. Hopefully, now that they've gotten one fix in, they can work and see if there's another problem down the line or there is another root cause to this. And time will tell, you know, it, I've fixed bugs before, right? Sometimes you fix one thing and it looks like you're getting close and it just took you farther away. And then all of a sudden, you know, that one thing that seemed to take you further away gets you a step closer, which I hope that's the case here because it, it's been, you know, we're, um, we're getting to, you know, the last third of June here and hopefully they just kind of uh, get done with this and get, Get over the uh, get o get over everything that is going on because right now uh, there seems to be no end in sight. And when you have another release looming, right? There's going to be another release coming up for the desktop side of processors, and you're trying to, you know, basically show off and say we're ready for the next launch. It's nothing like having instability issues with your last generation and the generation before and still haven't had a solution or an official statement on it as well. So I hopefully have an update at some point that will show us, hey, this is the end of it. We are actually getting done. We, you know, Intel has something, and this is all, you know, nothing, nothing to see anymore. You know, people had issues, but whatever else. You know, I, I, I do think that kind of how they did the BIOS updates and everything else, and you have to go to that basically kind of like that baseline or default profile now, and as long as your chip runs at that, it's okay. I think, you know, if you didn't have issues for months and all of a sudden you started having issues, I do think Intel should have took those chips and made them and just made it right. I mean, any company, I, I feel better when you decide to, you know what, this is a K chip. Maybe we had a setting wrong. Maybe we didn't, you know, work with the motherboard manufacturers enough and make sure that they had all the everything in line with what we expected with specs. We made mistakes here, and we didn't go through and with the fine tune. We didn't go through this whole launch with releases with our products with a fine tune comb, comb as we should with the motherboard manufacturers. And we're just going to take this on the chin, and we are going to make this right by the consumer. I think that press alone, Intel, would have made up for 
the hit you would have taken financially because going forward, you know, people like me, when you're looking at chips about your stability issues and everything else, we know that you're going to stand by your product and make sure that you're going to make it right by the customer instead of, you know, passing the blame to everybody else. And then when there's a problem later on in one of your chips or one of your products down the line, it's going to be hard for a person to be like, well, this might be the Intel chip. Oh, I shouldn't have gone with that. And then you get the bad taste in your mouth of that product, and that's when people start going to a competitor or letting, you know, Qualcomm that's going to, you know, that they're trying to eat everybody's lunch in the PC market with Copilot Plus PCs and everything else for that time. But, you know, that that's just something I would have done if I was, you know... I get it. It's going to be, it could be expensive. I, I should say it's not going to be. It could be, depending upon how many there are that people have to, you know, do RMAs and stuff. But that expense later on, you know, down the years, I think will much benefit, much benefit Intel by paying off than not. And that's what I would have done. So let me know if you, you know, what your thoughts still here on Intel on it going forward, you know. Um, the, this ETVB, which is Enhanced Thermal Boost Velocity, um, the, or Velocity Boost, it is a, you know, it's an algorithm in the microcode and stuff like this. It's just, you know, a lot of these chips, you, there's a huge hardware side of it, but there's also this microcode that helps, you know, control them and tell them what they're going to be able to do. And it's just like anything else. You can find bugs in there, but then also trying to find the root cause of what something is when you're hopefully testing this and everything else is um, makes it much more difficult. So I do hope that Intel gets through this and everything else. I wish that they had an official statement by the end of May. That's not there. One thing you have to consider is, is does this affect any other microcode going forward on other processors or is this just limited to the 13th and 14th gen um, and how they pushed them when the power envelopes? All that stuff is something you, we have to consider because of Intel's, you know, holding up the curtain and not letting us, you know, get more information, see behind the curtain. So we know actually um, where Intel stands, at least with their concerns and on their products. So with that, let me know in the comments below if you have anything on this topic. I hope that it will come to a close at some point and we'll have a good resolution. Maybe Intel will start doing, we'll do RMAs for all those processors that started to fail with stability issues. I think that would be a great ending for everybody. You get that microcode and have those fixes. I think that would be a benefit for everybody. But time will tell if there is something like that for those that do have a you know silicon degradation to the point where even the microcode update won't fix it. With that, thank you so much for watching Grave Alone and helping this channel grow. I really do appreciate everything you guys do to help and support the channel. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit that bell icon, and make sure you watch another one of my videos, and all that stuff does really help out the channel. Until next time, God bless.